All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm gonna show you how to stream your gameplay from games and also share your screen over Discord so your friends can watch and also participate in their own little way. So generally, the way that you screen share things is if it's a game, Discord has to detect it as a game and offer you the ability to directly stream from it. Otherwise, you won't be able to share any of the sound. That way they can't hear you if you're just screen sharing, for example. So to get that to work, all we have to do is open up Steam and hit play on whatever game. I'm just saying we're gonna do Among Us for whatever reason, because it pops open in a little window. And then here you'll see it popped up in the lower left-hand corner above our voice connection, because you have to be in a voice channel for this to work. It popped up down here so that it gives you the option to directly stream from Among Us, and you can click this button right here to stream Among Us to your friends. This will then ask you what channel in this server that you want to stream it to. Again, it has to be a voice channel. You can notify my friends in the server that I'm streaming if you want, it'll ping everybody. And then for stream quality, you get some different options. By default, without paying for Nitro, it'll offer you the ability to stream at 720p, and 30 frames per second. But if you pay for Nitro, you can go up as high as 1440p, which is like 2K size videos. That's like 2,560 by 1440 is the aspect ratio. Or after that, it offers you the ability to stream the source. And what that means is as big as your computer is currently running right now for resolution, it will attempt to stream that resolution to all of your friends over Discord. That includes up to 4K and 8K, but that will require a higher level of bandwidth. So if you think your internet's slower, leave it at 1080p or leave it at 1440p. After that, you have the option of streaming at a higher frame rate. I recommend going to 60 It make sure it's buttery smooth for all of your friends. If you don't have Nitro, it'll be stuck at 30. When you are ready, you can click the button to go live. And then here you see up in the corner, because it's streaming among us, it will show a preview of your stream up in this corner. And if you click on it, it'll bring you into the streaming screen where you can see it all blown up. And it'll also show you all of the people who are currently in the chat, which makes it very convenient and easy to use. Um, this will also be the same window. If you click on this, it'll make it larger. If you click it again, it'll minimize it. And this is nice because you can watch or see the stream itself, the preview of it, and you can also see the webcams of anybody else who has their webcam enabled currently in the video chat. So now they can see this and they should also be able to hear it. In this case, you can only hear it when I'm tabbed in. Now, when you're tabbed into the game, it'll black out this preview window because it's saving resources on your computer by not playing the same video fit footage twice. This cuts down on lag and that's a good thing, but it will black out when you're playing it. So if you have more than one screen, don't be alarmed. That's just what it looks like when you're tabbed back into your game. And they should be able to view it and all that stuff just fine. Now, when you close this game, normally that should stop the stream automatically because it's no longer detecting the game. However, sometimes if you don't end the stream first before closing the game, it might start streaming some of your video footage of whatever's going on on your desktop. So it's a good idea to close the stream before you close the program. It prevents people from seeing any personal information that you might not want them to see. This is more of a thing for streamers, but just be careful, you never know. So that's how you stream games to people. And if you don't see your game in that list, you can go to your user settings. It's the little gear in the bottom left-hand corner and you can go into registered games and it'll show you all of the games that you've been playing lately that it can detect. And what you can do then is if you don't see it in here, you can run the game and click on add it and find it in this pull down of all the other stuff running on your computer, or you can search for it if you know what it's called. And then you can select it, like I can select Adobe Audition, and I can add Adobe Audition as a source, and then I can stream directly from that. And if you wanted to, you could use this to add other software as a game, and that would allow you to capture the audio from that software so that you could do things like 
screen share a Photoshop tutorial and show your friends you drawing or do a video editing tutorial, whatever situation you might want audio from, that's a good way to get it by adding it to your activity settings, registered games. But if that's not doing it for you, you can then go up to the top here and you can add, remove it from the list by simply hovering over one of these games and then exiting it out. So with that in mind, let's um, grab a random piece of software. What do I have open? I've got the media encoder open and we have the option to stream just this screen with the media encoder if we want to. So I can select screen share and this will open up and ask you which one of the different applications that you have open do you want to stream from or you can select which one of your monitors that you want to stream from as well. So you could even select like from one of your screens. I've got Google in the other screen and I've got my current like Discord display in this screen. But I, you can also pick from one of the applications that's currently open on your screen as well. So I can say, I want to do a tutorial on Adobe Media Encoder, so I'm going to select that. And it has the exact same options that the previous screen has for size and quality, and then you can click on Go Live. You can also click from a preset. You can save like presets in here, where it's smooth video versus better text readability, which is really high quality. I prefer just to click a couple buttons down here for resolution and frame rate. That seems to be the most effective way to do that. And you can click go live and then it'll stream the uh, Adobe media encoder that I have open over here on the side. Now remember, screen sharing does not involve audio. So you would have to add a game as a, or a piece of software as a game in order to stream directly from it and try to capture the system audio. And then the same thing applies when you're sharing your screen. It shows up right here inside of your preview for Discord. You can hover over it and hit stop streaming, and then it'll stop streaming. Or if you, well, in this case, you're streaming your screen, so it won't stop even if it's you close the software. It'll just default to streaming whatever screen that software was currently sitting in when you were messing with it. So it's always best to close the stream from the Discord window to prevent it from popping over and showing anything else on your computer. If there's anything private open, I would generally assume if you're screen sharing, you shouldn't have something like that open, but it's just good to know. And all of these options are available for anyone that you're having a private direct communication conversation with. You just have to hop into a voice call with that person and then you can screen share games or just your screen the same way that I just showcased doing right here in this video tutorial. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. This has been a brief look at the different ways to screen share and to stream games and other media over Discord. Um, you can also find inside of here under voice and video a few other settings like how to control your webcam, but I will cover that in a different tutorial. So I hope that you found this helpful. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.